Hi, my name is Francesca Silveri. Um, my friends call me Kika. I am the writer, director and producer together with a lovely guy called Yuri uh, of Good Riddance. My name is Ross Mullen and I'm one of the actors in Kika's new film. My name is James Dodd. I am in Kika's new movie. She's a very talented director. Kika is directing me and she's thinks it's too bossy to direct me. But I said, come on, she has to direct me. My name is John Rogan. So she sent over the script. I met up with her in a coffee shop uh, and I loved it. I play a bit of a mystery character, I guess. In the time that he was a drag queen, he was adored by fans. But now, obviously, having not performed for a long time, uh, he's kind of been forgotten. And not only that, but also the, the sort of important people in his life have now died or disappeared in one way or other. And uh, he is obviously feeling very lonely and almost like demotivated. The only one thing that still keeps him going is the passion that he had for performing. And I like the part of this old drag queen. I won't tell you too much about it. <laughs> this drag queen who feels, uh, to a degree like I feel, that uh, his work is limited. But in his case, he's uh, very ill and he's dying. But he has this manic sort of uh, passionate energy to uh, keep on performing. And we meet him, we find him at a point in the story where he's decided to make a comeback. And he's been somehow interviewed by a person who doesn't seem to understand why he really wants to make a comeback. And that's exactly what he's going to explain to him, the reasons for this. The character I'm playing, uh, the brilliant thing about him is he is you just don't know who he is. So there could be something sinister, or is this character genuinely curious, or someone from his dark past, um, a former lover? If all goes according to plan, at the opening of the script, you, uh, at the opening of the movie, you see a, a shot of me. And as the uh, script develops and unfolds, you see more and more shots of me. So basically, it's all about me. I saw this amazing play called um, uh, Awake and Sing by Clifford Odets. And in the cast, there was this amazing actor called uh, John Rogan, who happened to be on a wheelchair. And he played this uh, lovely, uh, sort of idealistic kind of uh, character. We met Kika and I about five years ago. Was it five years ago only? Five years ago at the Almeida when I was doing a play by Clifford Odets called Awake and Sing, which I loved doing. And his character was still full of passion, full of life, and he still really wanted to, you know, carry on living and make everybody understand that life went on. And uh, there was one particular moment in the play when he was consoling uh, his grandson who wanted to run away to marry the girl he loved and he wasn't allowed to marry her. And that moment was very simple, but because John basically was very limited being on a wheelchair, he had to focus his performance on his voice and his eyes and his facial expressions and it just completely broke your heart. It's great, it's a really brilliant script. I love the other actors. I've worked with James Dodd before. Uh, he's really lovely. And John, it'll be my first time working with him, but I know he's a fantastic actor. Uh, as far as the other actors are concerned, they're dreadful. It's all about me. Uh, no, seriously though, uh, Ross Mullen is fantastic. Uh, I've seen loads of his uh, work and worked with him in the past before, which was a delight. What would happen if an actor or a performer of certain kinds suddenly wasn't able to do what they do best. You know, they tell stories, but they tell stories on a stage and they need to be able to tell the stories like they always have. And what if you take that away? If you take, for example, a physical ability. Uh, for me, being a writer, if suddenly I wasn't able to write anymore, uh, I would be completely destroyed. Uh, and obviously, any storyteller will tell you that that's what you do. You know, you tell stories even when you're not telling stories. You write stories even when you're not physically writing stories because your brain works that way. So even if you're physically uh, incapable of doing what you always do, your mind, your brain, your passion will always be craving for telling stories. Um, I saw her last, I believe it was her last uh, film, loved it, uh, and uh, have great hopes for this one. I met Kika years ago and knew instantly she was very talented and she approached me, I guess about six months ago, uh, after she'd seen that I was in Game of Thrones 
and wanted to have a meeting with me and uh, sent me over her short films that she'd worked on and I thought they were, I was just very, very impressed with the work. Um, so already I was thinking, well great, if she's written something and she's got me in mind, that'll be really brilliant for me. And then uh, she sent me this lovely script, which I liked a lot. I thought it was really sweet and charming and, and it wasn't sentimental. It was really sort of very real and very sad and also because I'm getting older, well we all are, but I'm certainly, and I'm in a wheelchair, obviously, and uh, you know, it has limited my career a bit because there's not an as much work for somebody in a wheelchair as somebody walking around and all the rest of it. What if a single person living on his own, uh, being of a certain age and disabled as such, uh, found himself at a point in his life where he just basically doesn't have anything left you know, to live for, they would just let go. And what if the, the only one thing that just simply kept him going was that passion, that spark, that love for you know, performing on stage. And then at that point, uh, it really hit me and I was like, I have to write the story about a drag queen and it has to be a drag queen that wins somehow against all the odds. It's a really beautiful script uh, when I first read it. When you first get a script, you're always a little bit ominous. Um, it's never quite, you're never quite sure whether it's going to be good. Most of the time it's not. Um, but uh, upon reading this, uh, I actually finished reading it, uh, embarrassingly on the tube, in tears in the rush hour. Um, it moved me that much and uh, from that moment on I knew I absolutely desperately wanted to be in it. So uh, I'm touched and delighted that I could be. And I'm just very pleased to be part of it. And therefore I could sort of identify with this guy and I'm looking forward to filming it whenever we do it. Yeah, so there. That's the story I wrote. Uh, that's the story I want to tell you. Uh, the story of Doris, an amazing drag queen. And I need to make it come alive. And I hope you can help me make it come alive. Thank you.